Today we're reviewing the Sigma 70mm f2.8 macro lens. We're breaking down everything that's important so that you can decide if this thing's going to be right for you. Let's go! So here it is, the Sigma 70mm f2.8 macro lens. And this is one of Sigma's art series lenses. Not many people actually need a macro lens, but man are they fun. You can see things from a different perspective and get some really interesting and creative shots, not to mention looking at what's crawled around and died under your couch in great detail. I personally use a macro lens almost every day and actually a lot in these videos I make. If you're just getting started looking at this lens, here's a few specs from the box or on the website that you'd find. Also, if this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, my name is Stefan Malik, so if you enjoy this content, consider hitting that subscribe button. Let's dive right into build and features. So here's the box and inside you'll find just a little bit of paperwork, a nice carrying case that Sigma usually includes, and the lens and a lens hood. Now being an art lens, the build quality is great, but this particular build is a little bit questionable in some regards. It measures seven and a quarter inches long with the lens hood attached and about five and one eighth inches without. It gets a little bit weird when you focus and a big barrel comes out the front, showing you the minimum focus distance and magnification ratios. And with the lens hood on, it's gonna be completely concealed, but a very interesting build. If you are focusing manually, well, I hope you're patient. Now it does have an automatic manual focus switch, which is great, as well as a focus limiter switch. But unlike the Sony 90mm macro, it does lack image stabilization. The focus ring is big, grippy, and turns very easily. Maybe a little bit too easy sometimes, as I find myself regularly blowing past my subject. It does have small 49mm filter threads. Complementing its metal build, it also has a nice metal mount with an impressive little rubber gasket for additional weather sealing. Overall, the build and features of this lens are interesting but decent, and I give it 3.5 stars. Next, when it comes to value, the Sigma 70mm has tons of it. You can pick it up from around 400 to 500 American dollars. And what you get for that is incredible. If you're shopping around, you may be comparing this lens to the Sony 90mm macro, which does outperform it in some regards, but it's also much more expensive. It's really gonna come down to your needs, but at the end of the day, the Sigma has great value. I give it four stars. Okay, let's get into it. Performance. How does this thing perform? Let's start with autofocus. Unfortunately, I'm sad to report that this thing's autofocus is one of its weak points. It's slow, it's loud, it's really not good. You already saw the painful process of manual focusing. The autofocus of this lens is really gonna limit what you can do with it. Here's the 90 millimeter in action. In comparison, it's quick, nearly silent, and completely internally focusing. Manual focusing is a dream as well. If you are considering both of these lenses, check out my full in-depth comparison video. So let's have a look at the sharpness and optics of this lens. Wide open at 2.8, it is incredibly sharp. Honestly, probably wide open, this is one of the sharpest lenses I've ever used. And yeah, it's a macro lens and it's supposed to be, but this is incredibly sharp even compared to some other macro lenses I've used. In the center is impressively sharp and the corners are almost just as good, I would say. Fantastic. Stop down to F4 for a tiny bit of an improvement, but still a very impressive performance even wide open. Down to 5.6 and F8, still consistent all the way down to F11 and after f11, diffraction starts to kick in and you lose just a tiny bit of image quality. 
Overall, an incredible performing lens when it comes to optics. Wide open, there's just a small amount of vignetting which can be fixed with a profile correction and basically no distortion whatsoever. Here it is off and here it is on. Let's have a look at the bokeh of this lens. For me, it's quite pleasing. It does have nine aperture blades and can produce some beautifully creamy backgrounds. But as you can see here, a lot of the time it's not completely round. So when it comes to performance, I wanted to point out just a few more things with this guy. It does have some limitations, of course, mainly with the autofocus, and it's not gonna be really any good for focus tracking or any type of movement. It's definitely not made for that anyways, but that's gonna also limit what you can do in video with it as well. It's not made for any kind of sports or really any tracking for that matter. As you've seen, it's great optically, so it's gonna be great at shooting those details, still life, product photography, things like that. But even if you are interested in shooting nature, getting in with those critters nice and close, that autofocus is gonna be loud. And do keep that in mind, that might be an issue for some of those little guys. Another drawback for this lens is that it's not image stabilized. And that might not seem like a huge deal, but if you're not relying on your tripod, you're trying to do macro at one to one or really getting in there, you're gonna have to really keep still or you're gonna have some issues. Keep that in mind. It can be tough to rate lenses on different aspects because different things are important to different people. But I'm cracking down and I'm being a bit more harsh these days. Although the optic quality of this lens is great, especially for the price, its manual and autofocus leaves something to be desired, as well as a lack of image stabilization, I give the performance of this lens three and a half stars. I honestly think every photographer should own a macro lens. They come in handy all the time and they're fun to use. This lens, like any lens, is not perfect, but it does have some value. And as usual, here's my personal pros and cons. And rating this lens as a whole, it's got some upside and some downside. It's a tough one, but I give it three and a half stars. If you're a subscriber, you also know that I like to rate things on a scale from never think about again to consider to definitely buy. And in this case, if you're on a budget maybe, and you're looking for a macro lens because you need it or just want to have some fun, this might be the one for you. I definitely consider it. So there you go, there's pretty much everything that you need to know to make a choice on this lens. If you want to see a video comparing it to the 90mm macro, make sure you check out my video on that. And if you like this video guys, if you found it helpful, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Drop your questions and comments down below. If you want to pick this lens up, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description for you as well. And like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you in the next one.